The semi-final defeat against Man City still feels pretty sore, to be honest with you. You know, misses and nearly chances dominated the conversation in that semi-final defeat. But we forgot that yet again, we went toe-to-toe -to -toe against Man City. And we were the better team for good parts of that game. Unfortunately, the lack of experience yet again this season was the reason behind our defeat. We never took advantage of the great opportunities we made and we gave away a pretty sloppy goal right before the game was about to end. It was a very valiant attempt though and there were great positives that I'm hoping that this team can now take forward against Arsenal tomorrow night because all I can do right now is focus on positives. We have like what, six, seven games left of the season. We have a game in hand and we have a real opportunity to try and dent Arsenal's title hopes for this season. Now, currently, we are 27 points behind them, but tomorrow, only three points matter. Now, Arsenal will do everything in their power to try to not make the same mistakes they did last season where they capitulated near the end of the season. We are going to see a return of both Declan Rice and Kai Havertz back at Stamford Bridge, and now that they've been knocked out of Europe, their only focus is going to be set on trying to win this Premier League. So there's a big opportunity for us to not only dent the hopes, but most importantly, boost our European hopes and try and secure Europa League football or some European football of some kind before the season ends. So I don't think we have any time right now to feel sorry for ourselves. All we can do is remember the positives. Remember the fact that yet again, we can play football against Man City and we can cause some issues and on our day, we are good enough to beat them. This is the same energy we're going to need against Arsenal tomorrow night. Now, tomorrow won't be simple for us because, of course, we have yet again some devastating injury news in anticipation for this game. I'll be discussing that in the team news as I go through this preview. But as I'm really trying to reiterate, we have no time to feel sorry for ourselves. We still have destiny in our hands to try and secure European football. Listen, I don't feel that confident. But I'm going to remain hopeful until this season ends. And all I can hope for is a big reaction from this young and inexperienced team. So today, my friends, I'm here to discuss team news, press conference key points and predict the lineup. So I hope you guys enjoy today's video. Hit that like button if you feel that these guys can bounce back after that semi-final defeat. Share your thoughts and opinions and getting straight into the video. Team news and the bad news only continues and continues because we've now learned that Cole Palmer won't be playing in tomorrow's game as he is currently out suffering with illness. Now, Pochettino said that tomorrow they're going to assess him again, but currently it's not looking very likely. And to be honest with you, I don't want Cole Palmer to be playing at 50% capacity when he's not fit enough or well enough to actually play. But it gets a bit worse because right now, Ben Chirol is yet again out alongside Malo Gusto. They're both uh, undergoing medical assessments at this point in time, but Poch said in this press conference that they both have minor knee ligament strains. So I'd imagine that they don't want to like stress their ligaments too much and it makes sense for them not to be used against Arsenal. So it's not great. Uh, for players who are doing partial team training, you're looking at Nkunku, Ugo Chukwu now, which is good because he's been out for a long time and obviously Robert Sanchez. But outside of that, it's the same old story for everyone else. So, you know, injuries have not helped Pochettino once this season, especially when it comes to building consistency. But my friends, I think it's best now to move on to discussing the press conference key points. Poch was asked a question on all our minds. Can we win without Cole Palmer? Now, it's not something we've done very often since we signed him. And as Poch said, listen, regardless, we can win. We feel like we can win. Uh, the collective is more important than any individual. And it's now an opportunity for some of these players to step up. And let's keep things real. Of course, we all expected this kind of cookie cutter answer. But at the same time, we wouldn't accept any defeatist talk, especially after we got knocked out the FA Cup semi-final. So it really just comes down to the players who do get selected this is your moment, take advantage and try and help us bounce back after that semi-final defeat. Now, we move on to one of the key points in the press conference and we discuss Nicholas Jackson because obviously after the terrible misses against Man City, he's not had a very good time with large parts of this fan base, in particular the social media fan base. It's been a bit disgraceful. Yes, he can be critiqued. 
There were some bad misses, of course, but critique and criticism are two different things. Critique is more constructive and criticism is just focusing on flaws as it's an outlet, of course, to release your anger and your frustration. And I do feel like it's a bit unfair on Nico because realistically, we didn't sign a guy that had more than 100 league goal scored in his career or even 100 league apps throughout his career. We signed a very raw talent and Nico has shown that he has that raw ability where he can single-handedly just create so many issues and havoc against Man City's defence. But he doesn't yet have that temperament, that control in those decisive moments to keep his head cool and keep that composure. I feel that's something that can come because the fact that he's matched his league tally in La Liga this season playing in a harder league in different circumstances with more eyes and pressure on you. Personally, I think this is a great educational season for Nico Jackson and I like to think that over the next so, you know, two seasons, three seasons, but you look back at this time and realize this was the defining period for Nico Jackson to get that experience and to settle playing for our team. And Porch basically said, listen, you know, this is his first season here. Your first season is always harder. He's our main striker and he's our only striker at this point in time. He does amazing work for the team with his running, his pressing, and the way he gives assists and goals for the team. As Poch said, it's his first season. He doesn't have as much experience, but even when he doesn't score, he fights for the team, his teammates. He needs time to improve. And I'm sorry, because I seem to remember a certain man called Timo Werner would be praised for the selfless acts of the team, even though his miss history is probably worse than Nico Jackson's as he has more experience and had a lot more goals scored under his belt. So I don't really understand that we don't have patience for the young forward that's very young first time here. As Poch said after his performance against Man City, this Nico has to live for these situations to improve. And I think this is something that Nico has shown throughout the season. And hopefully this makes him a stronger player as he gets better and as he develops. But to end things with the abuse, the criticism and some of the racial abuse that Nico Jackson received. You know, Pochettino said, it is our duty to connect with the fans, of course, by having these social media accounts. But essentially, it boiled down to this. He said that online you get good faith actors and you get bad faith actors who hide behind social media. Um, it's about staying strong. And you have to know it's not a reference for what people think of you. So it's nice that Nico's being backed. But, you know, if I was to talk to Nico, I would tell him, listen, one of our best strikers in our history in Didier Drogba, when he first came here at 26 year old with a lot more experience, he had it very hard. He had much criticism against him and didn't have as much support from his fan base like you would actually think looking back in time. So you can still change your fortunes here. Take confidence that as your career progresses at this football club. So that is a Nico Jackson talk out of the way, my friends. There were a few other things mentioned in the press conference, but to be honest with you, I think it's stuff we've heard before. Obviously, Arsenal, one of the reasons why they're doing so well this season is that Arteta can consistently rely upon players throughout the season. Arsenal haven't suffered many crazy injury crises throughout the season. Whereas us, on the other hand, every single time Porch is trying to build towards something, an injury comes to the wrong player and that resets the game plan. And this is why we've struggled for consistency. And Porch is like, listen, one day we can reach that level Arsenal are. We have to remember where Arsenal first started and where they are currently. You only get there with hard work, the right decisions and signing the right players in the market. And I think we should take confidence in the fact that if we were constantly getting outplayed and just embarrassed by teams this season. It would make this season awful like last season was. But the fact that it's details at the moment that's costing us in front of goal and obviously defending, these are the type of improvements that we can control next season and hopefully get better in. And hopefully, if you had to ask me how I see us developing, I hope that you see like a strong identity and you see strong improvements during the second half of next season because when I've seen Liverpool and our, you know, and Arsenal and a few other clubs showing improvements, you tend to see what the team's really about during the halfway point of you know the latter stages of the season. So my friends, that's press conference key points out the way. Ending things with the predictor lineup. Now it doesn't help that Gusto, Ben, players like Cole Palmer are out the team. There's gonna be big decisions now from Pochettino. 
Does Enzo continue to play? I'd be surprised. Could Raheem Sterling potentially form a, a, a two-striker formation playing up front alongside Nico Jackson? We saw something similar against Sheffield United. Time will tell. But my friends, this is the lineup that I'm going for. I'm going for a 4-2-3-1. Up front, Nico Jackson. Alongside him, I've gone for Mudrick. I've gone for Kahn's. I've gone for Madweke. Of course, Gallagher. Caicedo in defense of Kukurea. I've gone for Silva, and this was the hard part now. Deciding whether Jalaba goes in the middle with the Sassi out wide, or the Sassi going in the middle with Jalaba out wide. And the reason why it was hard for me is because, of course, Jalaba complements playing alongside Silva because Silva's the guy that sweeps up the danger in behind, and, and Jalaba complements that because he has the pace to be more proactive, and that's normally the best like, defensive partnership. However, now that Gusto is out, you'd say that Jalaba is a lot more technical and better playing out wide. And is it worth having him in the wide areas, knowing that maybe De Sassi's pace and Silva's pace don't necessarily always complement each other? But at the same time, you know, it could be a strong enough and decent enough box presence from either defender. And hopefully we see signs of like an ever-growing understanding between both De Sassi and Silva because... They have played a lot of games already, so I'm going to go for Jalaba out wide with the Sassy in the fence with Silva. But to end with the predicted lineup, I'm really hoping that I see Nico Jackson have a big performance. I'm not even going to put pressure on the kids. I feel like I love if he can score a goal and kind of like right the wrongs that he's going to partially feel that he made against Man City because he has ambition. He wants to win. He wants to be successful. And it's not like he went home smiling about, yes, I played well, but then I didn't score. I mean, we could see his reaction after the game. He would have known that he, he could have done it for us on Saturday. But I feel like the best way to react during moments like this is to focus on your football and get goals. And I hope that Nico Jackson can get on that score sheet tomorrow and he can reach getting 15 goals throughout the season in his first season because that would be a very good start to his career at Chelsea. Um, outside of that though, attack was pretty hard because I felt like, again, you know, should Starling be playing on the left hand side? Should Mudrick really play there? Uh, you know, he's a bit too inconsistent for me, Mudrick, but it's not like Sterling isn't at the same time. But I think, again, I'd rather Sterling come on as a sub if things are going against us. And at some point, Mudrick now needs to stamp his authority a bit more. And I have always felt like him and Nico do combine okay. They're not too bad. And hopefully having like a Chukwumeka playing as that 10, linking the midfield and attack can maybe help release Mudrik a bit better against Arsenal because I do think that you want to have that pace just to pose some problems to their fullbacks, just to push them back, not to give them too much license to get forward. And at least Mudrik can hold the width in those wide areas. And again, you know, I'd be disappointed if I don't see Chukwemeka playing because, you know, I think he's got the talent. Every time he's come on, he's looked good. And I think him starting against Arsenal, of course, can remind Pochettino that, you know what, sometimes you can't even rest Cole Palmer because you have Carnes here, who's also ready to do a good job for the team. So my friends, that is the predicted lineup. Share your thoughts and opinions. And on that note, I'm the FC. This is Blue Lines TV. I'll see you guys later with some more videos.